At number 10 are the blocks of Puma Punku. Nestled in the high Bolivia Andes, this temple complex is more than just ancient architecture. Some believe it to be a cosmic connection to extraterrestrial visitors. Imagine this, massive stones weighing up to a mind-boggling 131 tons move to a jaw-dropping altitude of 12,800 feet with no trees cut down for help. How did ancient humans accomplish this feat over a millennium ago? And the precision cuts on these stones, they're so perfect, it's like they were sculpted by otherworldly hands. Could could these intricate marvels be evidence of ancient aliens lending a hand? The tools used remain a baffling enigma. Were our ancestors more advanced than we thought? Puma Punku leaves us pondering whether otherworldly assistance played a part in shaping human history. So is Puma Punku ultimate proof of extraterrestrial involvement? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And if you're liking the video so far, you can support this channel by pressing like, subscribing to Bumblebee, and ringing that notification bell. At number 9, UFOs in Ancient Japan. This is a mind-boggling discovery that might just rewrite Japan's ancient history. Ancient tiles inscribed with what looks like to be kanju characters have been found at Asukadera, Japan's first Buddhist temple. But here's where it gets intriguing. One of these titles bears the character of Flight and also has an initial character, Asuka, in the temple's name. Coincidence, or is it a cosmic connection left by ancient aliens? And hold on, we've got more. Pyramid-like structures, unusual stones, an intricate star chart found in the Katira tomb, featuring constellations of celestial movements unlike anything of its time. Is it possible that aliens could have shared their cosmic knowledge with our ancestors, shaping Japan's history and leaving behind astonishing evidence? Is it possible that we're looking at the fingerprints of ancient aliens in Japan's past? Feel free to hash it out down in the comments. At number eight are the flying temples. The Vimana are ancient flying machines that might have been evidence of ancient aliens. Imagine a world where high-tech aircraft roam the skies, but 4,000 years ago. Meet David W. Davenport, a researcher who connected the dots between scanser text and advanced technology. See, he hinted at ancient aircraft reconstruction of Vimana with clues hidden in the past. A city called Mohenjo-Daro was wiped out in an explosion that could have been nuclear. Davenport's work also points to a manual of aeronautics, the Vimanika Astrasha, describing electric motors and more. But language is a barrier. Imagine explaining smartphones to folks from the 18th century. They'd be baffled. See, Davenport faced the same challenge, decoding terms like gooseneck and whiskers. It's like a futuristic scholar trying to make us grasp their advanced tech using unfamiliar words. Could Vimanas be the link to ancient aliens? Well, the puzzle is complex, like deciphering ancient code. The truth might be out there waiting for us to connect the dots. At number seven, the robotic century in ancient India. Imagine robots guarding Buddha's relics in ancient India, a story that might sound like pure fantasy, but it's rooted in intriguing historical connections. Travel back with me to ancient Greece, where Homer first introduced the concept of automatron. Now fast forward to the Hellenic Alexandria, where engineers brought these ideas to life with real mechanical robots. Now let's journey to India. In a time of kings and innovation, Ajitasatru, a ruler known for his military inventions, safeguarded Buddha's precious remains using remarkable robot guards. These automaton defenders were predicted to watch over the relics until a future king spread them across the land. Hints of these robotic marvels also appear in Hindu and Buddhist texts, where they're described as whirling and slashing like wind, reminiscent of Ajitasatru's war chariots. The tale takes an even more intriguing turn as we explore connections between the East and the West. Now, could this possibly be evidence of ancient exchange of technology? Contracts between India and Greece during the King's era hint at potential cross-pollination of ideas. Greek ambassadors, inscriptions, and correspondence between the rulers suggest a web of connections that could have birthed this captivating legend. While we can't confirm whether robots truly guarded Buddha's relics, this story serves as a testament to the timeless link between human imagination and scientific exploration. At number six is the treasury at Petra. Built in the first century BC, See, this masterpiece stands as a baffling anomaly in architectural history. Its design, unlike anything in the region, hints at the possibility of ancient alien influence. It's a structure carved into the cliffs, defying norms of its era. Could it be that extraterrestrial architects lent their expertise? And what is its purpose? Well, it's a cosmic mystery. Could the treasury have served as a cosmic message or repository for advanced knowledge? As we admire this enigma, we're left wondering if the treasury Petra is not just some monument to human creativity, but a celestial connection to the unknown. And back to Hathor Temple for Dandera Light. And it's not even actually a light, so major punk with that one. It's actually a stone depiction of what's potentially a light located in a long underground passageway directly beneath the main temple that is completely covered in carvings. According to Egyptologists, the bulb-like structure represents the womb of Nut, the goddess of the sky, which is also a common depiction of the night. It's been a major source of controversy in Egyptian history since many fringe historians interpret the depiction 
as evidence of a modern lighting system, similar in appearance to a Crookes tube. Supporters of this theory claim that electrical light would give an explanation to the absence of lamp black deposits in many discovered tombs in Egypt. The Dendera light is often used in similar contexts as the Baghdad battery in the assumption that ancient cultures were much more advanced than we believe today. Naturally, this opens the doors for conspiracy involving aliens as it's often assumed that ancient civilizations found technological advancements through their intervention. There is a mainstream explanation from Egyptologists that makes the most sense and collaborates with other transcriptions in the temple, but we want irrational alien theories, so we're going to ignore that and move on to the Atacama Desert Geoglyphs. Suck it Nazca lines because these glyphs are monstrous, covering 150 plus square kilometers compared to Nazca's only 250 square kilometers. However, there are similarities outside of their whopping size difference, so maybe I'm speaking too soon. Both Nazca and these Atacama glyphs had multiple symbolic or ritual purposes, but the Atacama glyphs also had a vital role in the transportation network connecting great South American civilizations. Using artifacts and stylistic characters, archaeologists believe the earliest was first constructed between 600 and 1500 AD. The widely varied geoglyphs are in geometric, animal, and human forms, and are in about 50 different types. Some geoglyphs are found in isolation, some are in panels up to 50 figures. The most frequent type of geoglyph is geometric forms, such as circles, circles with dots, rectangles, crosses, arrows, parallel lines, all sorts of stuff. This Atacama Desert is known for alien association of all kind. In 2018, a tiny alien skeleton found here pretty much broke the internet. It was actually technically found in 2002. There's the Blood Red Lagoon, mummies that are older than the ones in Egypt, and some of the world's clearest stargazing can be done here. Another alien associate part of Atacama is the Atacama Giant. I wanted to talk about it separately because it deserves its own attention. It's the largest Atacama desert carving, 390 feet tall and carved into a hillside. It's undoubtedly alien in appearance. It is the largest prehistoric anthropomorphic. It has been suggested that the petroglyph represents a shaman, spiritual figure, or deity, but there is little evidence to corroborate these claims. Scientists think that the Atacama giant was likely an astronomical guide, as the lines that stretch off of the figure's head predict the movements of the moon and can be used to map the changing of seasons. By knowing this, the day, crop cycle, and weather patterns, they could determine a lot. Or, as some believe, perhaps it really is a depiction of the alien who created it or them. Several of them represent enigmatic anthropomorphic figures with elongated or ovular heads along with geometric patterns. Personally, I think he's creepy as hell, so let's just shuffle on. Next up is the Karlesu Screamer. You may recall the Karlesu from the top 10 ancient alien discoveries that will confuse you video. These ruins are the oldest ruins of the oldest civilization in all of South America. The site dates back 4,000, even 5,000 years, making it one of the oldest cities in the world. This site consists of six stone pyramids that were found next to large amphitheaters, ceremonial rooms, altars, and many other structures. And after excavation started on this site in 2001, there was a lot to discover, such as treasures, history, and lore. And just half mile southwest at the city's pyramids and mounds, the Coral Screamer. Notice the D-shaped head and its large gaping mouth with wild raked hair. The facial features include a sliced half nose and sagging almond shaped eyes. Its mouth appears to be open in a horrified screech. This geoglyph is similar to the screaming bleeding figures found etched into stone walls at the site called Senchana in Cosma Valley, 150 miles to the north. But like those, it's unclear what this petroglyph means. It is believed to have been constructed around the same time as Corral and have been associated to a nearby ceremonial site. Many wonder how this face was made, similar to the Nazca and Blythe lines, without any vantage point. And for what purpose? This is far less easy to brush off as ceremonial than something like patterns, squiggles, and lines. Unfortunately, Corral Sioux history is mostly lost, as is its civilization. However, it's drawn lots of alien attention, as lots of temples are built at the 450 AD point. Its circular formation is similar to many others. It's been assumed to have a landing pad of sorts, and there is belief that astronomically it's connected to sites nearby. And the last on our list is the alien art of Chattisigar. I'm sorry if I say that wrong. These paintings are vividly red and in remarkable condition. Located about 130 kilometer from Rapur, the caves come under the Villa Chandali and Gotatolia land in India. Extensive research is needed for further findings. Chattisigar and its surrounding areas presently doesn't have any such experts on prehistoric or archaeological findings who could give clarity on subjects, so it's about patiently waiting for that access. In the meantime, however, there are several beliefs that about paintings among locals in the villages. While a few worship the paintings, others narrate stories that they've heard from ancestors about Rohella people, aka the small-sized ones, who used to land from the sky in a round-shaped flying object and take away one or two persons of the village who never returned. Could be onto something, there is a cave painting depicting a craft with fan-like 
antenna and three legs for a vehicle stand, but that could just be a coincidence. The paintings are done in natural colors and the paints have hardly faded despite the years. The strangely carved figures are seen holding weapon like objects and don't have clear features, oftentimes missing a nose and mouth. Some pictures it appears that the people are even wearing a form of space suit. To which archaeologist J.R. Bagard replies, we can't refute the possibility of imagination by prehistoric men, humans usually fancy such things. He continues to say that art depictions are similar to that of aliens seen in Hollywood and Bollywood, adding that the findings suggest that humans in prehistoric times may have seen or imagined things from other planets, which creates curiosity among the peoples and the researchers. Kicking off the list at number 10, KV-55. Located in the Valley of the Kings in Egypt, Tomb 55, otherwise known as KV-55, was found by Edward Arden back in 1907. It was discovered right next to King Tut's tomb, and the reason we call this tomb by a number rather than name is because we really don't know who was inside it yet. Even the walls outside of the tomb, they aren't covered with any hieroglyphs to tip us off or give us any hints. It's just bare, which is kind of eerie. As you walk down the 20 steps towards KV-55, you'll notice markings on the entrance. Markings that show that the entrance was widened since it was first cut, along with its ceilings being raised higher. So whatever was in there needed the room. The only hint as to who was buried remains on the walls. One hieroglyph remains and it was discovered in 1907 and it translates to the evil one that shall not live again. Even these massive stones were built in order to prevent anything from getting out. See, usually with these ancient tombs, it's the opposite. The description for who's inside the tomb had also been destroyed. So we have no idea who or what is in KV-55. Number 9, King Teti. The Pyramid of Teti was built for the first ruler of the 6th dynasty, and while it's not flashy or massive as these other pyramids, the insides contain the oldest writing in the religious world. Pretty insane. Now these texts go back to 2400 BC, way back when we used, you know, BBM. The pyramid texts were specifically written so that this King Teddy could ascend to the heavens after his death. There are spells and incantations meant to free the king's soul and arrive in the cosmos. More specifically, for Teddy to become a star in the sky and then join Osiris and Orion in the God Squad. There's even instructions on how to preserve the body and travel to said heavens. World's oldest instruction manual for the win. Number 8. Queen Nefertiti After a scan was done on King Tut's tomb, there were cracks found on the north and earth walls. East, Taylor, east, not earth. There were cracks found on the north and east side walls. So we believe that this is a secret passageway to Queen Nefertiti, the ruler during the 14th century BC, and also wife to King Tut. Queen Nefertiti's parents are also still unknown to this day, so that adds to it. And with ancient texts depicting that these kings and queens would leave Earth and then later return, perhaps they are both descendants of extraterrestrials. And this flying sun disk that they worshipped was not the sun, but rather a winged alien ancestor. Number seven, Dozer. For this one, we're looking into some bull worshipping, so grab your red scarves and start waving them around. Just north of the Steppe Pyramid of the Pharaoh Doser, archaeologist August Marionette discovered this site in 1851. The Serapium is a temple dedicated to the Egyptian deity Serapis, a combination of Osiris and Apis in human form. Now, this was a large burial ground for the Apis bulls. They were basically these bulls that were said to be sacred, and after their death, they would become immortal. Remember that, that's important. Today at Saqqara, there's this massive vault. It's 382 yards long, and it's carved out of sandstone bedrock. It's massive, and along the sides of them are 24 chambers, each with sarcophagus carved out of a single chunk of granite. Now, inside these boxes were animal remains, just bones and all. But back then, in those times, you weren't allowed to break up any bodies. That was a no-go. You had to mummify them. So how are these tombs built, first of all, so perfectly, weighing over 80 tons, and where do these bones come from? Perhaps these are the remains of the Apis bull. After all, that's the inspiration for the Minotaurs, so maybe alien ancestors looked a lot more jacked than we may think. Number six, dung beetles. This one isn't exactly a pharaoh at all, but it's too good to leave out, especially if we're talking about aliens here. It's important. Dung beetles, also known as scarabs, are the only species in the entire world that follows the Milky Way. Think about that for a second. That is. Let's talk about it. Some animals follow the sun. You know, turtles sprint to the ocean the second they're born to avoid getting plucked up by birds. Now these insects would follow the line of the Milky Way and then roll their towards it. Literally, their, their poop, they would roll it towards the skies, which is insane. Symbols of these beetles are seen all over, either in hieroglyphics or even in movies, their presence is known. Near the sacred lake at the Temple of Karnak, there is a massive scarab monument. And there's even a legend still to this day behind said statue that if you walk around it nine times, you would find health, wealth, and love. And you'd also probably be a little bit dizzy. The scarab is there to represent the god Kefri, which at the time Egyptians believed was the sun as well. Also known as the scarab face god, which terrifying when you imagine that. 
Are these bugs just trying to get home into space to their bug alien master? Why does he need so much poop? Whatever DIY project they're working on in the Milky Way probably doesn't smell too good. Number five, Rendlesham Forest. The Roswell of the UK, Boxing Day. 1980, the forest lays between the military bases of Ben Waters and Woodbridge. 3 a.m., two military personnel, John Burroughs and Jim Penniston, respond to bright lights in the forest. The radio stopped working. There was a static feeling in the air and an odd, absolute silence. The closer the men got, the more they realized it wasn't ours. Penniston was drawn in and touched the craft, instantly electrocuting him and apparently downloading him with odd symbols and star system maps before the craft then blasted off. 24 hours after, the craft returned and Deputy Commander Charles Halt is now witness in the exact same spot. The trees, petrified. The ground, radioactive. And there are three large landing holes in the grass. Years later, Burroughs and Penniston still continuously ask the British government for their medical records from that night that they never received. Almost 32 years later and still nothing. Creepy. Number four, Zimbabwe children. In 1996, a mass sighting was witnessed by an entire school in broad daylight in Rua, Zimbabwe, Africa. More than 150 students and staff were present. There have been tons of documentaries surrounding this case. Face to face, arm's length with the craft and beings, the children, who are now mostly in their 30s and 40s, are still convinced. More than 100 students can still remember what they claim to be telepathic warnings from the creatures surrounding our use of technology and the hazards it has on our planet drawings, first-hand interviews, and the weirdest part, all the same story. Same description of the craft, same description of the beings. Director and writer James Fox documents this infamous interaction in his 2020 documentary called The Phenomenon. If you haven't seen this, check it out. I'm telling you, it's worth it. Number three, Skinwalker Ranch. 500 acres on this land in Ballard, Utah, the most bizarre spot on Earth. Skinwalker, getting its name from the first Navajo people's word for an evil spirit that inhabits the human form. The reports start in the 30s with the Myers, then the Shermans in the 90s. Then, Robert Bigelow, creator of Bigelow Aerospace, purchases the ranch for the development of UAP and consciousness research with the Advanced Aerial Threat Identification Program, or also known as ATIP. Gifted a budget to conduct research, this is where it starts getting weird. 2013 UAP researcher Brandon Fugel then buys the ranch from Bigelow, and History Channel's team of the Skinwalker Ranch series, an entirety of a crew of about 160 people, remain there to this day, conducting experiments and living on the land. Some examples of reports are hundreds of unexpected explainable cow mutilations, flying discs, orbs, ghosts, Bigfoots, and of course, a giant pulsing magnetic signature buried under the mountain. That's horrifying. Number two, the O'Hare Airport. The O'Hare Airport incident happened at approximately 4.15 p.m. broad daylight on November 7, 2006. Chicago O'Hare International Airport receives a report that a group of 12 airport employees were witnessing a metallic saucer-shaped craft hovering still over gate C-17. The object was spotted by a ramp employee first, then it was witnessed by pilots, then airline management, and numerous mechanics simultaneously. No air traffic controller saw the object on radar. Mm. A completely silent seven meter dark gray saucer sits. Several witnesses outside the airport also saw the object, ringing up local police and reporting numerous phone-ins describing a disc craft hovering over the airport for numerous minutes without moving. According to another witness, the object then shot straight up through the clouds at high velocity, leaving a clear blue hole in the clouds. According to the Chicago Tribune the next day, the disc was visible for over five minutes and was seen by dozens of airport personnel. And coming in at number one, we have the Tic Tac. November 14th, 2004, 100 miles southwest of San Diego, California, the USS Nimitz Carrier Strike Group, which included the nuclear-powered carrier and missile cruiser, the USS Princeton, were conducting a series of drills in the Persian Gulf. Around 2 p.m., two F-A-18 Super Hornet fighter jets from the Nimitz received an unusual ask to help with a real-time world mission. The Princeton's radar, which had been picking up objects for several days, the Princeton's senior radar screen showed over 100 UAPs in just that week alone buzzing the ships. When noticed one of the objects was flying about 50 meters above the water, Commander David Fravor and the Black Aces Squadron described it as about 40 feet long, shaped like a Tic Tac candy with zero means of propulsion. Fravor decided to intercept the object at this point, and the object started copying the jet's maneuvers. Impossible by physics standards today. After engaging the UAPs, they vanished, and the strike group remained active, confused, and awaiting disclosure. Yeah, I'd say this encounter is the absolute best proof we have to this day. Number 10, 
Al Warden, American test pilot, engineer, and NASA astronaut Alfred Merrill Warden, the pilot for the Apollo 15 lunar missions in 1971, one of the 24 people that have gone to the moon. Woohoo! He orbited it 74 times. Well, he was the first to even drive a moon car. Warden remained at NASA until 1975, and then it gets a little weird. Recently, on a morning show, they asked Warden, why do we keep going back to the moon? He paused and said, quote, survival. Survival of our species. When pressed on aliens, he said, you know, we are the aliens, right? We just think there's somebody else. We're the ones who came from somewhere else because somebody else had to survive. They got in a little spacecraft and they came here and they landed and they started civilization here. And if you don't believe me, go get books on the ancient Sumerians and see what they have to say about it, end quote. <laughs> yeah, that's not uh, terrifying at all, Al. Number nine, Edgar Mitchell. Edgar Dean Mitchell was a US Navy officer, aviator, test pilot, engineer, NASA astronaut, and of course, ufologist. Ufology is the pseudo term for somebody who studies UFOs. I don't think there's like a degree you can just get that in. If so, where? I'm signing up. Just needed a name for it, I guess? I don't know. The lunar module pilot of Apollo 14 in 1971, guy clocked nine hours working on the moon. He was the sixth person to walk on the moon as well. Mitchell publicly expressed his opinions that he was sure that there were thousands of UFOs recorded since the early 1940s, apparently belonging to other planets. Thousands of them. NBC conducted an interview in 1996. He talked about meeting with officials from three different countries who said that they had met ETs in person. Quote, the evidence for alien contact is very strong and classified by governments who are covering up visitations and the existence of alien bodies, specifically in places like Roswell, New Mexico. Uh, sorry, do you mind if I just see his credentials one more time? Thank you so much. Number eight, James McDivitt. James Alton McDivitt is an American test pilot, Air Force pilot, engineer, and NASA astronaut who flew both in the Gemini and Apollo programs. McDivitt was selected by NASA for the Gemini 4 mission, and in 1965, he saw, filmed, and photographed an object, which approached the Gemini 4 as they were orbiting Earth over Hawaii, apparently. The UFO had a long arm sticking out of it. Quote, I was flying with Ed, he was sleeping, we were drifting, when suddenly an object appeared in the window, a cylindrical object, white. The film was then sent back to NASA and reviewed by NASA film technicians in 1975. It looked like a white beer can with a pencil sticking out of it. Yeah, he tried for years to get the word out about the phenomenon, but NASA lost those pictures apparently. Oh, that James, he's a, he's a crazy one up there in space with all those degrees he has. What a wacko. Number seven, Dark Side of the Moon. Not just an absolute banger of an album, also one of the most terrifying mysterious places in our galaxy, the dark side of our moon. Since the 1950s, NASA has seen and heard some pretty weird stuff back there. See, once you sign that non-disclosure, they kind of own you, you know? Despite what you may have heard, it's true that the Apollo 10 astronauts did hear some interesting sounds behind the moon, described as outer space type music. Audio recordings from the Apollo 10 mission, astronaut Gene Kernan asks John Young if he hears that. Gene calls it music and says it even sounds outer spacey sounding. Young says, we're gonna have to find out about that because nobody's gonna believe us. Hey man, no one believes anyone who's gone up there, so don't take it personally. Astronauts go through visual and audio testing like the Navy SEALs. They know what they're doing. If they say Angel by Shaggy is playing back there, I'm believing them. Number six, Leland Melvin. American engineer and NASA astronaut on board the space shuttle Atlantis, selected by NASA in 1998. This guy's put in time with mission after mission. Melvin has over 565 hours in space. Quite the practice at the whole floating around thing, I'd say. When Leland then was pressed about otherworldly visitors, he said, he had seen something translucent, curved, and organic looking when he was working with fellow astronaut Randy Bresnik. The pair called the ground to ask NASA what it could be, and NASA's response was, eh, probably ice, probably ice. Nice and scientific, Houston. Thanks for that. Mr. Melvin dismissed this and figured it was just NASA's explanation to cover it up. Like, who's more qualified here? That's all I'm asking. When the most qualified people are like, yeah, I can't tell if that's frozen water or a spaceship. Either they shouldn't be up there at all, or they need some more Windex on those windows now. Up 
next is the City of the Gods number 5. Teotihuacan is its actual name. This sprawling ancient city in Mexico is known best for its astronomically aligned buildings and complex pyramid temples. Their building was dated back 2000 years and scientists have suspected a mixture of cultures including Mayan, Zapotec and Mixtec built the city so that they could house more than 100,000 people. They adorned it with murals and they had a transportation system. Evidence shows advanced agricultural practices that earned the city a reputation of being much more technologically developed than should be possible in pre-Aztec Mexico. So naturally that brings us to the ideology of aliens, especially as the most massive temple, the Pyramid of the Sun, which is one of the largest constructions in the Western Hemisphere. It's also been noted that the alignment of the pyramids is based on calendar cycles. Many people believe that the flat top pyramid served as a landing pad where the alien secrets lay inside the impenetrable walls. In 2003 though, a sinkhole caused by a flood led to the discovery of the Avenue of the Dead Tunnel, connecting the Sun Temple with the Temple of the Plumed Serpent. People believe that this connection correlates with rituals and contacts shared between civilizations and aliens, these tunnels being used to transport sacrifice or make passage between the communication stations easier. Its name was given to it by the Aztecs when its deserted ruins were discovered sometime in the 1300s. It had already been abandoned for centuries at this point. When the names translated, it means the place where men become gods, and why they chose to name it that, we're unsure. When the Aztecs founded, there was likely a great amount of discernible history available in contrast to today's standards. Perhaps they saw writings and stories that we didn't, something to make them believe in godly powers of the temples or the peoples. We know frustratingly little about this mysterious society from the conditions of its rise to the circumstances of its collapse to its actual name. The Delphi site of Greece is number four. Alien theorists love to use Greeks as a basis for their theories. This is because of the possibility of life beyond earth is one that began in ancient Greece world, originating at least as far back as the 4th century BC when ancient Greek society had schools of thought that speculated extraterrestrial life. One of the favorite examples is Delphi, Greece, where the stone masonry is eerily similar to that of Saxe Humana in Peru, which is believed to be a site of alien intervention. This was also the famous site of the Oracle of Delphi, a prophetic woman who would reside in the temple of Parmasus. She was rumored to have sat on a golden tripod over a fissure in limestone where she could breathe in the breath of Apollo and communicate with invisible forces. What she was breathing in, we aren't sure. According to toxologist Henry Spiller, both of the ways an oracle's vision would occur, either peaceful and slow or erratic and barely legible, are symptoms associated with inhalation of hydrocarbon gases, aka she could have just been zooted. But with the architecture as a star, alienologists jumped to say that this perhaps too could have truly been alien communication. The oracle was said to be possessed by Apollo and in order to be asked prophetic questions about upcoming war, political actions, theories of life and more, what if it wasn't Apollo, but rather she was channeling alien messages through an unconscious state that the fisher had been a beam of alien power going into her. Maybe that explains why Delphi Greece is considered one of the three major UFO sighting hotbeds in Greece. In fact, on June 3rd of 2012, this picture was taken and posted on a UFO forum claiming the image to contain a UFO. What do you think, faux or fact? It's Corral Soup at number three. And despite its significance now, the importance of this site wasn't determined until decades after its discovery. Hilariously, this is because of the sheer size and complexity of it deceived scholars, and many believe that the site was more recent, so they left it largely ignored. It's in 1994, Ruth Shady was studying the site. She realized the lack of pottery wasn't because of the recency, the site was just dated before the advent of pot firing technology. Radiocarbon dating on some of the woven bags found inside the pyramid confirmed that Corral Soup were the locus of some of the earliest population concentrations and corporate architecture in South America, dating somewhere around 2600 BC, which upended history's well-established timeline, pushing it back 4,600 or more years. Now since then, other Notre Chico sites have been found that date several hundred years earlier, but at the same time, Corral Soup was being built, so was the ziggurats in Mesopotamia and the step pyramids of Egypt, all incredibly similar structures. Ancient astronaut theorists believe that they could be profoundly connected, especially following the theory of ancient buildings such as these that tend to average around the 4,500 age range. But the largest mystery of Corral Soup remains why it was abandoned so suddenly after thousands of years of inhabitation. There's no concrete evidence indicating a single event like an earthquake or large flood that ended this occupation. Number two is the Nazca Lines. These are a little more famous, so you may be familiar. They lay 320 kilometers southeast of Lima and they cover a total length of 1300 kilometers of high and dry plateau. They are seemingly at random. Joining them are 300 geometric shapes and 70 figures of animals, including 
including a spider, a monkey, a hummingbird, and a bizarre alien man figure. The biggest shapes stretch nearly 1,200 feet across and are best viewed from the air. Scientists suspect that the Nazca drawings are as many as two millennia old, and because of their age, size, and visibility from above, and mysterious nature, the lines are often cited as one of the best examples of alien handiwork on Earth. I mean, how would an ancient culture have been able to make such huge designs in the desert without being able to fly? And why? The longest of the lines runs straight as an arrow for miles, so some believe it would have acted as a landing strip. Perhaps the art was meant to be gifts of appreciation to the aliens so they may look down at them from above. So how did the ancients manage to create such a precise etchings from the ground without being able to fly? The only theoretical way is that people could have flown in the air at this time is with the form of a hot air balloon, as suggested by American explorer Jim Woodman. But we don't know for sure, so the Nazca lines uh, remain a fascinating enigma. But the explanation for how the Nazca lines were physically created is quite simple. They're called geoglyphs. These enigmatic designs are made by removing the top rust colored layer of rocks and exposing the bright white sand underneath. And for number one, let's investigate the Sardinian giant. The Mediterranean's most important archaeological discovery of the 20th century was a complete accident and also unearthed a creepy conspiracy. When farmers are plowing their fields in 1974 in central Cabras, they hit something. That something turned out to be 5,000 fragments that underwent a painstaking and lengthy reconstruction process to form gigantic statues. 16 boxers, 6 archers, and 6 warriors. This colossal army of 26 statues has a height of 8 feet 2 inches and weigh an average of 880 pounds each. Each figure was carved from one limestone block alone. They have highly stylized features such as triangular faces, T-shaped eyebrows and noses, and their most distinctive features are their eyes. They're represented by large round circles that stare straight ahead and right into your soul. I imagine if they weren't built to be intimidating, they were anyways. Every photo I've seen feels like they see through you. This is one of the aspects that give the statues an alien look, fueling alternative theories about the ancient astronauts. What is certain is that the giants are surrounded by an aura of legend since their discovery, as they belong to the mysterious Nuragiyak civilization, which very little is known of. The lands of Sardinia are also dotted with their tombs, which are called tombs of giants. Why? Because they're huge! The burial chambers are 65 to 98 feet in length and 7 to 10 feet deep, and according to the various inhabitants of nearby cities, very large bones were found in the countryside surrounding their village. Some claim that they belong to men up to 11 feet tall. Legendary painter Muscus himself found the remains of a giant skeleton in a cave in 1972, when he was still a child and made one of these claims himself. Interviewed repeatedly by journalists, locals stand by that any giant skeletons that have shown up or been shown to authorities or the experts when they are found almost always disappeared into thin air the next day. Sometimes so did the finder. We're starting off the countdown with the familiar Nazca lines. We've talked about them in some of our other alien videos as well as ancient art videos, so you may know what I'm referring to. These are the best known geoglyphs in the world and were made sometime between the 200 BC and 800 AD point. They're more than 800 feet long white line work etched into the Peruvian desert, the longest running straight for over a mile. They're alongside 300 some odd shapes and 70 figures and animals. The biggest shapes stretch nearly 1200 feet across and are the best viewed for, and are best viewed from air and certain vantages on nearby hills. Scientists suspect the Nazca drawings are as many as two millennia old and because of their age, size and visibility from above and mysterious nature, the lines are often cited as some of the best examples of alien handiwork on earth. Otherwise, how would an ancient culture have been able to make such huge designs in the desert without being able to fly? And why? Eric von Danken in his 1968 book Chariots of the Gods proposed that the ancient Nazca was landing site for extraterrestrial spacecrafts. The alien being supposedly imparted the local people with special knowledge and technology before returning to their home planet. After the departure of these ancient astronauts, the Nazca culture built a series of giant images and designs as messages to the extraterrestrial beings whom they viewed as their gods. You may remember debating this with your friends when it trended on Twitter, the helicopter high Hieroglyphic. Thandera's Hathor temple has a bunch of funky stuff going on that we'll talk about in this video. The first being this. What you're seeing is hieroglyphics, and among them is a carving of what looks like a helicopter, even airplane or submarine, depending on how far your imagination goes. But I feel like the helicopter is evident enough for all of us to notice. Ancient astronaut believers have leapt on this, seeing a representation of modern technology in antiquity, knowledge perhaps given to the Egyptians by time travelers or extraterrestrial entities. As much as you 
you may not believe in aliens, the explanation that archaeologists have for this actually does like suck. They're trying to pitch things like hieroglyphics depicting modern technology as an example of pareidolia, our tendency to perceive a pattern and meaning that isn't actually there. Because predicting a helicopter specifically exactly how it would look to a T is just a normal pattern recognition stuff. Usually pareidolia is perceiving a human face in the tree, not predicting a whole scale invention. One viable argument however is in ancient Egypt it was common for hieroglyphics to be recarved over time, especially when a new pharaoh came into power. Digital imaging has shown that these carvings are overlaid, one original from the reign of Seti the first and was remade for the reign of Ramses the second. So archaeologists believe that the plaster used to cover the Seti first inscription eroded over time which led to the appearance of a single combined image. What do you think? And while we're inside Dendera, watch your step because the melted stone staircase is here. Maybe not necessarily a hieroglyphic or a petroglyph but it's altered stone and people associated with aliens so it fits my parameters, make it work for yours. This is the temple of Hathor, look at that beauty. This site in Dendera is an option for travelers who want to take a honeymoon somewhere unexpected. Intricate figures and finely carved hieroglyphics haven't lost their charm over the years on young lovers. Now this is one of the staircases that leads out to the roof of the iconic temple of Hathor at Dendera. It's built in pure granite and sandstone during the Platonic rule around 300 BC. Yet the stone steps appear to be melted and it's hard to imagine what could have managed to melt solid stone steps seeing as the temperature needed to melt solid marble is 1339 celsius. It is believed that some of Dendera was built over another pre-existing site as we know the priests would use this staircase to access the shrine of Hathor on the temple roof. The images on the walls on either side of this passageway even depict the line of priests who are carrying offerings up this shrine. Ancient alien believers theorized that the temple roofs were used to communicate with aliens that Egyptians worshipped as gods and it could also be the reason that the stairs are melted. Perhaps it's the result of an alien landing or technology, maybe the temple was built on a powerful alien site and the melting is a result of that, or of an alien device once stored in this mighty and godly temple. Who knows? A break from Dendera before we revisit its light. Let's talk about the Topak Maze, an archaeological site located south of Interstate 40 near Needles, California. And while it's hypothesized to be a geoglyph, the purpose, age, and creators of the lines are highly disputed. A 1978 study by Arda Demheisnell proposed that the lines were prehistoric and had some sort of religious or ceremonial significance to the native Mojave people. And the modern Mojave people believe that this maze is a part of a spiritual portal to the next life where bad souls get lost and good souls find their portal to the afterlife. Early experts believe that the warriors returning from battle would also run through the maze, leaving any bad spirits behind in it. Regardless as to why it was created, the magnitude and magnificence of this geoglyph can't be disputed. How long this geoglyph will be able to withstand the elements is unknown and how it has for an approximate 600 years is also unknown. What is known is the long-standing belief of the power and correlation of the site with souls of the dead. Many people have pilgrimaged over to the site in hopes of spiritual relief. This has inspired theories of alien involvement in the creation of the mass lines maze and its effect on a person being alien technology. The Blythe Intaglios are sisters, not twins, with the Nazca lines. Located about four hours from Los Angeles in the city of Blythe, the Blythe Intaglios are the most well known of over 200 of them in the Colorado desert. That's right, we got a desert full of doodles and it's the only known desert intaglios in North America. And while pictographs such as mountain lions, birds, snakes, and geometrics are strewn all over this desert, the human figures are only found near the Colorado River. The largest of the etchings is over 170 feet in length. These figures are so immense that many of them were not observed by non-natives until the 1930s as they're best seen from air. So if you didn't pay attention to the ground as you were walking, it was easy to miss them if you aren't looking for them. Nobody knows what the figures represent, but they have some theories, and you can read about them on the plaques next to each fenced-in area if you visit the site. Many of the engravings are believed to date from the prehistoric period, but their age and identity of their creators are still uncertain, even as local indigenous clans have not claimed the making of the site, but some have claimed to use them for ancestral worship. The biggest mystery still remains how they made the giant works of art in the first place without being able to check their work from overhead. The correlation of the Nazca lines and the Blythe and Tiglios is a natural for alien enthusiasts in the way that pyramids can be connected. There are once again theories of alien landing pads or dedications and thanks to aliens above from humans below via artwork. At number five are the Dogu figurines. These enigmatic figurines with their distinctive large goggle-like eyes has 
puzzled scholars and raised an eyebrow or two. While mainstream thinking suggests that they're tied to religious and shamanic practices, let's take a moment to entertain a more out of this world idea. Imagine a scenario where the Jaman people had contact with advanced extraterrestrial beings. These figurines might be artistic attempts to capture their appearance as a sort of cosmic selfie in clay. Those big eyes, they could resemble a stereotypical grays from UFO lore. And the deliberate breaking of the figurines? What if it's a symbolic act, a way to communicate or release energy to those unworldly visitors? But of course, this is all speculative fun. The traditional explanation of these religious rituals holds merit. Still, it's fascinating to consider the possibility that these Dogu figurines could be a link to ancient alien encounters, an ancient mystery waiting to be unraveled. So whether you're a skeptic or explorer of the unknown, the Dogu figurines remain an intriguing enigma, inviting us to imagine the secrets they might hold. At number four is Lalibela's Rock Hone Churches. First off, Ethiopia's long-standing Christianity is impressive, and these churches are a testament to that. But are we missing a more celestial connection? The meticulous design and cross-shaped windows, ventilation and drainage seems almost as if the technology was way too advanced for their time. Now the mainstream theory points to King Lalibela as the mastermind behind this architectural marvel. But the evidence is as thin as a whisper. An ancient tool that looks more like a farm implement than a rock carving instrument? It's a head scratcher. But here's the juicy bit. Some suggest that aliens could have lent a hand. Imagine extraterrestrial beings collaborating with the king, sharing their cosmic know-how, and with their help, these churches could have been carved out of the stone with ease. And let's not forget the locals' take. They're convinced that the king had a divine assist, an army of angels working overnight. Could this be a metaphor for advanced beings? At number three, the Baltic Sea Anomaly. A mushroom-like object rising from the seabed, covered in straight edges, construction lines, and even a mysterious staircase. It's like an underwater puzzle just waiting to be solved. This enigma sits at a depth of 300 feet with a circular shape about 60 meters in diameter and a tail stretching 400 meters. It caught the attention of explorers, scientists, and UFO enthusiasts alike. But here's where it gets really intriguing. Electronic equipment goes haywire near it. It's as if this anomaly disrupts the very laws of technology. Could this be evidence of ancient aliens? Some speculate that this might be a sunken UFO or a portal to another world. But there's more to the story. A Swedish diving team recorded footage of the runaway-like structure leading up to the object. And while experts debate its origins from ancient civilizations to shrunken submarines, one thing's for sure, the Baltic Sea mystery keeps us guessing. At number two is Nan Madal. Nan Madal is an abandoned megalithic city that defies our understanding of ancient capabilities. Over a hundred artificial islands spread across a lagoon, held together by mortar, but by the precise placement and sheer weight of the colossal stone columns. Now here's the twist. According to local legends, gigantic birds were responsible for moving these massive stones. But let's peel back the layers of myth and uncover a more unconventional idea. What if these tales hint at the involvement of advanced beings, perhaps ancient aliens, who gifted our ancestors with knowledge and technology beyond their time? And at number one, the Borobudur Temple. This ancient marvel nestled in Indonesia boasts an intricate design that has left historians and archaeologists scratching their heads. Constructed by the Shailendra dynasty in the 8th century, this colossal Buddhist temple is a testament to human skill and dedication. However, the sheer scale and complexity of this construction have led some to wonder. Could there have been an extraterrestrial touch involved? Now here's the twist. The temple's original design was altered mid-construction due to fears of collapse. But what if this change wasn't just about stability? What if there was an extraterrestrial influence guiding those adjustments? Moreover, the temple's resemblance to Mandela, the symbol of cosmic harmony, raises intriguing questions. Could this be evidence of higher intelligence shaping its form? And let's not forget the over 500 statues adorning the temple, including an unfinished Buddha sculpture within the main stupa. Its origin remains shrouded in a mystery, sparking speculation about celestial gifts. From unexplained artifacts to mind-bending structures, these ten baffling signs of ancient aliens leave us with more questions than answers, reminding us that the universe's mysteries are as captivating as they are enigmatic. Number 10. Roswell. The birth of the UAP phenomenon. Post-Cold War, 1945, the US's first nuclear explosion. 1946, the first underwater nuclear explosion. 1947, the first crash flying saucer. Local rancher Mac Brazel finds the wreckage on his property in Lincoln County, New Mexico. Sheriff Wilcox shows RAAF's commanding officer, Colonel Blanchard, the materials, and during the night, the Air Force combs the entirety of the property, apparently harboring two small injured alien bodies. Taking them then to Kirkland Air Force Base, New Mexico that night, the very next morning, the Roswell Air Force makes a statement claiming that they have recovered a crashed flying disc in local newspapers. Boom, history baby. A photograph of Jesse Marcel, the head intelligence officer who investigated and recovered some of the debris. The very next day, the army retracts their statement, however, and all of a sudden, a high altitude weather balloon, AKA, 
the birth of the conspiracy theory. Nuclear fission explosions, weather balloons, something's not adding up here. Number nine, the Washington flap. July 19th, 1952, air traffic controller at Washington National Airport spots seven slow moving objects on his radar, a fleet of flying saucers. Two F-94 interceptor jets take off and become scrambled as each of them approached, radar included. Seven days later, the UFOs are back over the nation's capital as two more jets scramble trying to chase it down. One of the pilots sees a bright light in the distance and decides to give it a chase. Quote, I tried to make contact with the bogeys below a thousand feet. I saw several bright lights. I was at max speed but even then I had no closing speed. I ceased chasing them because I saw no chance of overtaking them at all. Newspaper headlines around the US scream, quote, saucers swarm over capital, and quote, jets chase DC sky ghosts. Probably not a good idea to just fly over the capital without saying hello first. Number eight, Betty and Barney Hill. The first real documented UAP abduction case in history. Betty and Barney Hill, married couple, New Hampshire. We're driving home one night from a three day honeymoon when a light started following them in the sky. Pulling over after after minutes of tailing, Barney got out of the car and gazed into the sky. From this moment on, the couple say two hours were lost. Betty's dress ripped, Barney's shoes scuffled, and both their watches two hours behind. Thinking nothing of it, they both reached home confused. And after weeks of no sleep, the couple reached out to a psychic researcher who could help them. And under hypnosis, the couple made some terrifying claims. They both, on separate occasions, claimed that they were separately walked into a large metal disc by small gray beings and continued to operate and experiment on the couple on board. Blood taken, bodies examined, and both of them downloaded an understanding of a star system called Zeta Reticuli. The hill stuck to their story for the remainder of their lives and remains one of the first and crucial American accounts of alien abduction. Number seven, Area 51. This secret base in the Nevada desert acts as the US's military hub for spatial engineering, maybe even some reverse engineering. The area is named after the geological grid of the desert. Groom Lake, Dreamland, this place has tons of nicknames. The area gained notoriety in the early 90s when numerous claims that workers had worked on alien aircraft and even heard of harboring alien creatures underground. The entire premises is fenced off with signs saying no photography allowed. Use of deadly force is authorized. That can't be good. Whatever they're hiding here, it's mostly military. The base has been a testing facility for the Air Force and remains one of the most highly secured and secretive bases in America. Remember the 2019 Storm Area 51 movement? Yeah. No one got him. Even the famous Bob Lazar has claimed he was an employee here. What do you think? Number six. Travis Walton, the horrifying abduction of local Arizona forester Travis Walton. Some of us know the name from the movie Fire in the Sky based on this exact case and filmed in 1993. On November 5th, 1975, Walton and a number of others from the logging crew were working with timber in the Apache Sid Greaves National Forest. While riding in a truck with six of his coworkers, they allegedly encountered a saucer shaped object hovering about 100 feet away making a high pitch buzz. Walton exited the truck and ran over curious. A beam of light then appeared from the craft and blasted him unconscious. The other six men were terrified and drove away before returning moments later in a panic to a now vanished Travis. Walton claims that he woke up in a hospital room observed by three short bald creatures. He fought with them until a more human looking figure led him down another room where he then blacked out. Walton claimed that he remembers nothing else until he found himself awake walking along a highway five days later naked, clueless of what had just happened. It's terrifying. Number five, Lord Nefertiti Room. For this next piece of evidence, we'll be directing our focus to the land down under. Australian aliens, baby, let's do it. In the Brisbane Water National Park to be specific. Egyptian hieroglyphs educate us on our past. There's still so much we don't know, but it's fun to find UFO looking objects within them. It's fun to speculate as we are right now. But when Egyptian texts appear around the world in the middle of nowhere, those UFO hieroglyphs get a bit more concerning. Like the Gosford glyphs, for example. Discovered in the 1970s at Karyong, there's around 300 engravings spread over two sandstone walls. The hieroglyphs are strikingly similar to that of Egypt. There's birds, even the markings of a scarab, which are those Milky Way poop pushers that I just talked about earlier. Egyptologist Raymond Johnson believes that this is the burial site of Egyptian royal family member Lord Nefertiru, who met his fate around 2600 BC, with some panels telling the story of two prince brothers who came from Egypt and subsequently became shipwrecked. But other panels get into the extraterrestrial goodness. Some of these Gosford glyphs have UFO shapes, with scarabs, birds, and sun symbols popping up as well. Maybe we did have alien aid when it came to laying these royal family members to rest. Number four, Userkaf. Remember earlier when I was talking about those extremely heavy granite coffins? Well, the Sun Temple in Egypt may give us more alien clues as to their purpose. 
Discovered in 1842, this was the base of a giant monument that apparently used to stand over 150 feet tall. Built by the pharaoh Yuzakaf, founder of the 5th dynasty of Egypt, the temple translates to Stronghold of Ra. Ra being the sun god. This temple at Abu Ghraib was home to one of the world's largest monoliths and its purpose may blow your mind. This obelisk was built out of granite. Now they made things out of granite back then because it contained quartz. Quartz, due to piezoelectricity, was able to convert the Earth's vibrations into energy. Nikola Tesla did something similar. He figured out standing waves, which was the ability to pass energy through the air. Perhaps these granite monoliths were used to teleport people or goods. That would explain the last point about those Australian glyphs. To be fair, I have zero idea how Bluetooth works either. Alien airdropped in Egypt. I'm here for this theory. Number three, Khufu. In order to become a god in the afterlife, these kings would build massive temples or pyramids. The Giza pyramids were built over 4,500 years ago, and to this day, they draw in about 15 million visitors a year. Pharaoh Khufu's is the largest pyramid in Giza, and it was the first pyramid that they started to build, obviously taking the longest. Reaching up to 147 meters high, it took 2.3 million rocks to create this landmark, and its alignment with Orion's belt gives it an extraterrestrial vibe, and with Tesla CEO Elon Musk tweeting aliens built the pyramids, obvi, we now have to ask just how did thousands of workers achieve this? The placement of the pyramid is also unique as well. It's aligned perfectly with the cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. That much accuracy back then with the stars and the earth and the heavens, they must have gotten help from alien friends or else they had the world's biggest protractor. Number two, King Tut. Only a few years after King Tut's tomb was discovered in the Valley of the Kings, archeologist Howard Carter found two daggers that were buried with said king. It's not uncommon to be buried with your goods. It's why Egyptians would build these tombs in a certain way, so that grave robbers wouldn't snoop around and steal your entire family heritage. It was made so nothing could get out, which is insane. But two daggers were found with King Tut, one made of iron and the other gold. Now with iron being even more rare than gold in the Bronze Age, this was a big deal. And with recent advancements in technology, we were able to use a technique called portable X-ray fluorescence spectrometry. And according to the journal Meteorites in the Planetary Science, the blade is actually made of iron, nickel, and cobalt, suggesting that this material is of extraterrestrial origin. And finally, number one, the Great Pyramid of Cholula. There are many parallels between Egyptian and Maya civilizations. The two cultures are so far apart, both in time and distance, and they also never made contact. But both pyramids are made with steps and both have stone serpents. The vault arches are also strikingly similar and hieroglyphs within share a lot of the same symbolism. These hieroglyphs include advanced mathematics that they say was bestowed upon them also from these sky gods. Was this just one landing site of our alien ancestors? Let us know in the comments below all your thoughts. Guys, thank you so much for joining us on today's video. Those were just 10 Egyptian pharaohs that have ties to extraterrestrials and maybe aliens, but which other civilizations do you think made contact? Do you think aliens are still hiding here today? Is Rachel an alien? We don't know. Let us know in the comments below. Number 10 is the pyramids of Chichen Itza. These ancient Mayan pyramids pyramids are obvious ones to end up on our list. This ancient structure has long since been connected to aliens. Many believe that they helped build the structure, but also use them as markers for landing space vessels. There's of course a theory as well though that the top of the pyramid has admitted a powerful energy beam, enabling the ancient Mayans to communicate with aliens or other pyramids around the world, implying the potential of interconnectedness between multiple pyramids and civilizations that we'll talk about through this video. Number 9 is the vast to architecture. These temples in India contain intriguing alien-like depictions carved on their stone walls. People flying, alien-esque figures, strange flying devices, the whole alien shebang. So one theory for this is that aliens visited ancient Indians and these interactions are depicted on their stonework now as a result. And to tack onto that, some believe that when these aliens shared their flying technology, the Indian people began to worship them as their gods. Naturally, we circle back to the concept of pyramids and grand temples being built to having the ability to harness energy from above to communicate with aliens or other civilizations as well. But it's been said that these temples were constructed with specific design given an old Hindu text known as Vastu Shastra, and the texts give intensely specific considerations to astronomy in its design, basing it off of all the movements of the stars and planets. So maybe a space laser being emitted from the temple isn't too far off. The gods, architectural methods, and advanced technology may not confirm the existence of aliens coming to Indian land, but at least can raise some suspicion. Anyways, the temples show a similarity
similarities to the depiction of an ancient Indian flying machine called Vin Amas, which will be number eight on the countdown. Script from over 2,000 years ago in India claimed dozens of accounts of people seeing these flying machines. They're described differently in some accounts. Man made wings like a plane, a disc shape, and a famous cloud palace depiction. The Sanskrit word Vin Manana, when translated, literally means measuring out, traversing. In short, it means some form of aircraft. When eight chapters of this ancient document are translated from Sanskrit, they revealed an intriguing list of these features that the devices had, such as remote images on screens, remote sounds. To protect itself, it had the ability to disguise itself as a cloud or create terrifying sounds. The discussion on Vimamana includes various constructions to double as boats or even submarines. There's discourses on astrophoric pressure, aeronautic hazards, and even dietary and clothing for aviators. These writings were no manifestations or metaphors. They talked about how the gods rode them, but anyone may ride and own one as well. They were treated as manufactured physical objects or even flying houses. For this much ancient text to be translated and have so much modern ideology and inventions, well, it must be aliens or perhaps some ancient sci-fi stories or perhaps now we see these objects with hindsight and try to fit them into something that makes more sense to us now, such as an airplane. But they're just anything but and we'll never know. Number seven is Stonehenge, another you should know to expect to see on this list. Now, I won't bring up things like the Easter head since we have sufficient evidence of human craft, but Stonehenge? On the table, so let's dive in. The circle of stone sits in the countryside of Salisbury and it comes from the Neolithic period, which was the final division of the Stone Age. They stand alone, a vast meadow sprawling for miles around it. Having visited Stonehenge myself, I can tell you that you have the choice of a 20 minute walk or a five minute shuttle ride. The energy is very void, as if the air is free of static and just doesn't seem to move. I'm not trying to be dramatic, but it does truly feel unearthly. These stones weigh an average of 50 tons and are over 8 feet in height. They seemingly dropped into their ring, no rhyme or reason in their placement, at least to Swiss author Eric Von Danken, who suggests that they may be a model of the solar system that doubled as an alien landing pad. How Stonehenge is assembled is unknown to us. There's no documentation, no other ruins, no art Artifacts, there's genuinely nothing but these stones, some of which were somehow lifted feet upwards and placed horizontally on others. There's no way to know what it means either, but what we do know is that the stones are somehow perfectly aligned with solstices and eclipses, suggesting that the builders did know astrological charts and were able to keep an eye on the heavens. That's if they didn't come from them. Number six is interplanetary, but still alien to us, hieroglyphics on Mars. We've always talked about and conspired about aliens visiting us in ancient civilizations here on Earth. Earth, but what if they visited elsewhere? Or we have. Ooh, sorry, that's ghosts, not aliens. Anyways, the reason for that is some NASA photos were released in 2015 that were taken by the Curiosity rover. It shows what looks like some kind of writing or hieroglyphic on the rocks. A boxy two shape next to what looks like a curved Y with two other extending legs are side by side. While we can't be sure what the marks are at this point, it certainly has enthused ancient alien believers who claim that this is yet more evidence that aliens and ancient people visited one another. But skeptics argue the so-called discoveries on the images sent back by the rover are just textures in the rock. Despite the temptation of reading into evidence found so far, scientists' understanding of Martian history is still unfolding. Questions up for debate are, was the ancient Martian atmosphere thick enough to keep the planet warm and wet for the time necessary to nurture life, are organic compounds found as signs of life, or simple chemistry that occurs when Martian rock interacts with our sun and water? What's your take? Hieroglyphics and conspiracy, or do you think they're just some cracked rock? Rocks. Awesome. Number five. Ivan Wagner. Astronaut Ivan Wagner was on the ISS as a first timer in 2020. You think they like do trades initiations to the rookies up there? Like no gravity and buckle you when you sleep? Ah. What do you think? He and fellow Russian Anatoly Ivishnin are working with Chris Cassidy up there, the American commander of said expedition. Wagner was then orbiting the Earth and might have actually captured footage of UFOs, better known now as UAPs. The aurora lights behind Earth's beautiful curves was being recorded, and it was seen he labeled the video Space Guests. Wagner then tweeted the vid, the aurora australis near Antarctica and Australia, and then this blob of organized lights shows up. Of course, NASA didn't follow up. Like, what are they gonna say? Uh, yeah, that, that's a swamp gas, birds, balloon, grass, cars, something up there, I don't know. Cut the feed, cut the feed. Number four, moonwalk. Yeah, so apparently the footage our parents and also 650 million people across the globe watched in 1969 was not the original footage. 
Hold up, hold up, what? Yeah, apparently what everyone saw on every television set across the globe wasn't as 4K as NASA's end. A man by the name of Gary George came across some very, very old tapes that might be proof as to what NASA sees and what they hear on their end. It's a little different than what we see. Gary George bought 218 surplus government tapes, three reels labeled Apollo 11 EVA. He auctioned them at Sotheby's, first generation of the moonwalk. So hold on, NASA just had a clear copy of this the whole time? I get it, maybe they had a bigger budget. I'm thinking so we can't see what's in the background or what's flying in the background, or any stars in the background. Yeah, I just wonder how long it's gonna take before Robert Bigelow or Tom DeLonge get their hands on that. Hey mom, there's something in the background, guys. Pay attention. Number three, Gordon Cooper. Leroy Gordon Cooper Jr. was an American engineer, test pilot, US Air Force pilot, and the youngest of the seven original astronauts in Project Mercury. You know the pictures, it's the old school tinfoil suits. 1963, Cooper piloted the longest and last Mercury space flight, Mercury Atlas 9. 34 hours in space. The first American to spend an entire day in space, the first to sleep in space, and in Cooper's autobiography, Leap of Faith, he recounted his relationship with the Air Force and NASA and their relationship to the UFO conspiracy. Cooper claimed to see his first UFO while flying over Germany. He said that there were hundreds of reports made by pilots, many coming from military on radar. In 1978, he even testified before the United Nations on the topic. Radar operators, fighter pilots, fellow astronauts. He was a strong advocate for disclosure up until his passing. Number two, lost in space. During the 60s, the space race was on between the Americans and the Russians. Like a good old hockey game, huh? Those two, always at it. The first to figure it out what it is to put something or someone up in a little metal box. It was actually the Soviets that secured many of the early victories. While NASA's efforts were widely publicized, of course, sometimes the Soviets made it a point to never announce a mission until days after it was completed, and of course, successful. This allowed them to maintain control over information. Enter stage right, the Judica Cordiglia brothers from Italy. Former amateur radio operators who apparently caught Russian audio recordings which allegedly proves the Soviets covered up cosmonauts failed missions in the early 1960s. Apparently she's saying, help, help, I feel hot, am I going to crash? Uh, yo, that is absolutely horrifying. If this is the real deal and the Soviets sent a woman into space that maybe didn't come back, this proves that whatever happens in space stays in space. We're only told what we're supposed to hear. Number one, Buzz Aldrin. American astronaut, engineer, fighter pilot with a doctor of science in astronautics. This guy is overqualified. Three spacewalks in 1966, Gemini 12 mission. As the lunar module Eagle pilot on the 1969 Apollo 11 mission, he and mission commander Neil Armstrong were the first two to land on the moon. There was something out there, close enough to be observed, and what it could be, according to Aldrin on Apollo 11 to the moon, he observed a light out of the window that appeared to be moving alongside them. But what could it have been other than another spacecraft from another country or maybe even another world. It was either the rocket that had separated from us or the four panels that moved away when we extracted the lander. After he returned home from his missions, he was convinced that he saw aliens while he was out there. Credentials aside, Guy took a lie detector test, which he passed with flying colors. In an interview with C-SPAN, Buzz talked about the future potential of the Earth's moon for humanity. He added a little extra info that might have ignited the spark to go back regarding a certain monolith on the moon. Quote, visit the moon Phobos of Mars. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato object that goes around the moon once every seven hours. When people find out about that, they're gonna say, who put that there? Yeah, I'll be the first one, Buzz. Who did put that there? A star fell from the sky. Although it's still left up for debate on what this record entails, it's still considered one of the earliest documentations of UFO activity on Earth. After conquering the ancient Nubian city of Napata, Thilmus III erected a steel or a stone slab at the Temple of Amun beneath the cobra-shaped Jebel Barkal. The steel described how a star came down to set fire to Themos' adversaries, quoted, You ought to know the wonder of Amun-Re before the entire land. Enemies and troops were about to come in order to meet in the night as to conduct the regulated watch. It was the second hour, and a star came to the south of them. Something similar had not occurred earlier, and it shot at the enemy from its proper place. It was like they were being overthrown upon their own blood and fallen into heaps of flame. 
Being behind them and fire was in front of them, they were incapacitated and were unable to flee. End quote. Although the star could have been a stray meteoroid or something from the sky that fell as its noted space junk made of debris commonly falls onto the Earth's lithosphere, but details of this event still remains unsure and is up for debate. Number 9. Angel Hair it's clear dating back in ancient civilizations where records in detail were scarce, there were still some ways humans were able to document what they've seen. Historian Lucius Cassiodio, who lived between 165 to 235 AD, was known for publishing 80 volumes of the history of ancient Rome. Typically, in his writings, he would summarize the events he'd seen, but eventually it became more detailed. After he sought witness an odd phenomena in the Roman Emperor sky in 196 AD, he describes in quote, a fine rain resembling silver descending from a clear sky upon the form of Augustus, end quote. He used some kind of material to plate some of his bronze coins, but by the fourth day, the silvery coating of the material was done. The coating is also referred to as angel hair or a fibrous substance reported in connections with UFO sightings and even manifestations of the Virgin Mary. Described as cobweb-like texture and design, reports of angel hair says that it disintegrates or evaporates within a short time of forming. Whatever it was, there is research that the angel hair, also known as angel grass, do typically look like short metallic threads falling from the sky, often forming intertwined loose masses. They are a type of shaft or radar countermeasure which can be in the form of fine strands which is typically dropped by military aircraft. It can also come from the sounding rocks and balloons of high altitudes. So what was it doing in 196 AD? Number 8. Kenneth Arnold Kenneth Arnold was an American aviator, businessman, and politician. He is best known for what is considered the first widely reported modern UFO sightings in the US. On June 24th, 1947, Kenneth Arnold claimed to have had a string of nine shiny unidentified flying objects flying past Mount Rainier at speeds that Arnold estimates a minimum of 1,200 miles per hour. This was the first post-World War II sighting in the United States that garnered nationwide news. And of course, being credited as the first UFO sightings, a number of more sightings would be reported in the following two to three weeks later, and Arnold's description led the press to coin the term flying saucer. However, this wasn't immune to others trying to commit a hoax as Arnold tried to interview those who also claimed what they saw. Unfortunately, this led to two Air Force officers losing their lives trying to investigate those claims. The aftermath led to a mix of yes and no's, fake or not fake controversies. Whatever Kenneth Arnold saw, he ended up seeing seven more additional sightings, one of which he says the saucer even looked like a jellyfish. Maybe this is a story where Jordan Peele got his inspiration for nope. Number 7. Lubak Lights Imagine after a long day at the office, you and your coworkers decide to hang outside on a nice evening, when suddenly all three of you look up and you see it. A semicircle of bluish green lights flying above you at high speed. For three scientists from Texas Tech, that's exactly what they saw one evening on August 25th, 1951. Over the next following days, dozens of reports of the exact sighting flood all over Crosstown. The Texas Tech freshman Carl Hart Jr. even snapped multiple photos of the so-called Lubbock lights. The professors weren't the only ones credited in seeing these lights, as there were many witnesses from Texas to New Mexico, all witnessing the same lights. However, Captain Edward Roplet decided to conduct an investigation on the matter and including the evidence handed in by Carl Hart Jr. to his conclusions after talking to one of the locals stated that it might have been just a bird with their underbellies reflected with the city lights. Many excused his comments as they knew what they saw. Either way, the Lubbock Lights incident does persist as a very captivating event to researchers to this day. Number 6. Love and Land If there are extraterrestrials who obtain higher levels of technology that is more advanced to our civilization, there's a chance that we might notice a bit more in our day to day. In movies where they showcase it with the lights flickering, power outages, etc. For a more scientific outlook, it could also be that they're carrying a high frequency of electric magnetic field that can affect our homes as well as our human health. That is to say, so many movies up to this point have been inspired by the incidences that transpired and thus birthing more content for the science fiction genre. Like in 1957 when dozens of citizens of Lemonland, Texas individually reported seeing a rocket or strange light that has interfered with their vehicles. Even though the police themselves were about to dismiss the case, they too saw the mysterious lights and tried to engage and investigate. Their findings with electrical storms and ball lighting was the cause of the lights and the mechanic to malfunction. However, there was never a single report of thunderstorms in the area that night. Whenever something falls from the sky, there's almost an immediate report to the object to officials to see what the heck it was. Considering we do live in a world where space and aircraft are more prominent, it wouldn't be surprising if something did fall from the sky. Although it would be very rare since that would be extremely dangerous. But in December 1980, US Air Force members stationed at two British Royal Air Force bases reported seeing strange colorful lights above Riddlesham Forest. 
One man who entered the forest to investigate noted a spacecraft in the woods. The next day, others confirmed the damage done by the nearby trees and noted high levels of radiation on site. Lieutenant Colonel Charles Halt recorded his observation on the radio tape that he latched on onto the lights. The UK Ministry of Defence, who oversaw the reports until the early 2000s, didn't find anything that would impose a credible threat to the nation and didn't pursue the investigation any further. Still, the craft or the evidence still left behind still remains unanswered as they have not been reported what it was that they found. The Rettlesham Forest is now a UFO tourist hotspot as the trail that visitors can hike off to is actually sitting in the model where the reported spacecraft was. Number 4. The Belgium Wave 1989 was the crossroads between the 80s and the new entryway towards the 90s. Around this time, at the end of November 1989, the citizens of Belgium reported seeing a large triangular UFO hovering in the sky. A few months later, in March 1990, another sighting confirmed by two military ground radar stations. F-16 fighter jets were sent out to investigate the anomalies and thought the pilots could not see anything visually. They were able to lock onto the target with radar, but the unidentified object managed to flee and the pilots ended up losing them. This time, roughly 13,500 people had been estimated to have seen this incident, making one of the most widely experienced UFO sightings in the modern era. What I am noticing, however, is although the Belgian Air Forces could have not found any explanations and the UK Military of Defence was told to research and investigate further, as soon as they figured the incident was not hostile or aggressive, they just stopped investigating? Weird. Number 3. The Lights Above the New Jersey Turnpike now that we're hitting the early 2000s, it's time to reflect a little bit on what we've learned. So far, we've got unexplained events that date back centuries and centuries ago. From unexplained material that could only exist in modern times, lights flickering, lights moving in tandem in groups, lights that are seen by thousands of people but are dismissed by military government to reduce hysteria, and the UK Minister of Defense not investigating cases as long as it doesn't pose a threat. Light show or no, it's still a little weird, like the lights above the New Jersey Turnpike in 2001. For the drivers in New Jersey, they took their road trip to a halt when they noticed on July 14, 2001, just 15 minutes after midnight, they marveled at the sight of orange and yellow lights in a V formation over the Arthur Kilt waterway between Staten Island, New York and Carteret, New Jersey. The police department Lieutenant Daniel Tyrant was a witness as well as several metro area residents on Long Island. Air traffic controllers initially denied that any airplanes, military jets, or spacecraft were responsible for the lights. But a group known as NYSPI, or New York Strange Phenomena Investigators, claimed to receive an FAA radar data that, that basically verifies that it being a UFO sighting that night. Number two, the USS Nimzit encounter. During a hearing before House lawmakers, an unidentified anomalies phenomena, also known as UFOs, and a retired Navy fighter pilot that testified his experience on seeing a tic-tac-looking object while on duty, on November 2004, the USS Princeton, part of the USS Nimzit Carrier Strike Group, unknown craft on radar 100 miles off the coast of San Diego. For two weeks, the crew have been tracking objects that appeared at 80,000 feet and then plummeting to hover right above the Pacific Ocean. Super weird. When two FA-18F fighters jets from aircraft USS Nimzit arrived in the area, the first saw what appeared to be churning the water with a shadow of an oval shape underneath the surface. And then a few moments later, it happened. A white tic-tac-shaped object appeared above the water. It had no visible markings of an engine or wings or windows, no signs of it being an animal or a submarine or infrared monitors or an exhaust. Black Aces Commander David Fravor and Lieutenant Commander Jim Slate of Strike Fighter Squadron 41 attempted to intercept, but it accelerated right away. Reappearing 60 miles away and then moving three more times at the speed of sound faster than the speed of fighter jets. There is US government footage of the encounter online. If you get a chance to see the video or any of the footages I mentioned on the list here, drop a comment and let me know what you think it is. And finally, number one, East Coast Go Fast video. Considering how advanced technology is, we're not sure what is real and what isn't. After all, there are filters, VFX editing software, things that can make it seem like it's there when it's not, so on and so forth. But when the news leaked in 2001 about the Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program, a video emerged that revealed an encounter between FA-18 Super Hornet and an unidentified aerial phenomena. Seen along the east coast of ATFLIR, or Advanced Targeting Forward Looking Infrared Pod, nice name, the craft was similar to that that was spotted in San Diego in 2004, the one that I mentioned in number two a fast moving white oval about 45 feet long without wings or exhaust plume. Pilots tracked the object at 25,000 feet above the Atlantic as it flew away and simultaneously rotated on its axis. No explanation since has emerged. Well, there you have it folks. Do you believe in UFOs or UAPs or whatever it's called? There are things out there that we just don't know yet. Maybe it's not in the stars, but it's always resided on Earth and we're just not paying attention to it till now. Number 10, Metal Maltesers. So this metallic floating bowling ball was just recorded in Perm, Russia. Yeah, giant metallic balls like this have been found 
literally littered all around the planet for decades, apparently. Most famously, ufologist Gary Nolan is currently now studying these metal Malteser looking things that people have collected over the years. Right now in Texas, there's a dude, nameless, who has a ton of these apparently. Jim Marlin, famous music producer, I guess named, was given these metal giant pinball spheres by a celebrity's bodyguard apparently, who said that they were dropped off from a craft in his backyard years ago. And like, a lot of these celebs have actually touched these things. Dennis Hopper, Jane Fonda, these things are famous like on their own. They also move on their own and apparently hold power and light up once in a while on their own. Like that's not scary at all. Hey dad, yeah your giant metal balls are floating again. And can you tape Survivor? It's the finale tonight. Number nine, Tom DeLong Instagram post. Yeah, Blink-182. I can confidently say that the three of us in this room right now are Blink-182 fans, right? Obviously, I remember enjoying their songs, Aliens Exist, that's one, that's, that one slapped right off the hop. But cut to 2022, former Blink member Tom DeLong. he's now the co-founder of To The Stars Academy of Arts and Science. Yeah, he's into aliens in real life now, not just in, not just in music. And 25 days ago, Tom DeLong posted what appears to be a photo of a real life alien. Says Tom DeLong. so you can be the judge of that. Here we go, what do you think? I vote real, I don't know, I'm like 80-20. What do we think? That's real. That's real. Number eight, Tic Tacs. Ah yes, the classic declassified Tic Tac shaped UAPs. That's a mouthful, dude. Scrambling destroyers, flying jets over the ocean circa 2004. We know about these things, right? Disclosure happened, people. Let's get up to speed here. I mean, look at the formations alone. The choreography is beautiful. These aliens are some good drivers, huh? Are these things drones? I feel like we just figured drones out like in the last 20 years. Some of these videos are from like the 1700s. So like, what the hell's going on here? What are they doing over the water too? We haven't explored what, like 80% of our oceans? I say we get some GoPros down there, huh? A little drain the ocean action? There's gotta be like some sort of octopus species that likes free diving or snorkeling or something, you know? Trans medium vehicles, people. Write that down. Number seven, parked alien. Okay, when I first opened this link, I jumped. So just a heads up, you got a creepy alien face coming in in three, two, one, bah, there it is. It's silly, it's scary. I'm not really sure how I feel about this one, but either way, it definitely looks real. Reddit users claim since this photo hasn't been fully debunked, it can still be held up for debate. Fair. They're like, well, it's not, not real. We're like, I, I guess, sure. A common argument is, where's the prop then, okay? Where's the material that made this exact alien suit? This looks better than today's CGI. Let's just use that from now on in movies. This reminds me of the alien from Signs, that birthday party scene alone. That could have been number one. That was some, that f***ed me up for like eight years straight, for sure. Number six. Iron Man? Uh, yeah, here, just for my sanity, we are all aware that not only do we have orbs, we have saucers, then triangles, and now Iron Man suits. Dude, this thing has a jetpack built into itself. That's gotta be Tony Stark. A silver saucer is scary enough, no? Imagine a little Jetson pod alien dude just hovering up to you on the side of a building. Like little escape pods. What is this, No Man's Sky? Like the dudes who commute to work on those one wheel things in the bike lanes doing like Mach 12 with shoulder pads on? This is exactly where we're headed in like 15 years, aren't we? This thing just whips back and forth too. It makes me laugh so hard. Just the physicality alone, you know what I mean? Like he can't get it. He's just like left, my left, my left. Sorry, right, right, right. Number five, driveway alien. Doorbell cam footage gave homeowner Vivian Gomez quite the shock on June 2nd, 2019. Yeah, she looked and saw maybe an alien. We're not sure yet. What is that? Is that a person? Is that a thing? I have no idea. I also love how unsure he is at first, like which direction he's going. If that's an alien, he has no idea where he is. He just had a rough night. He's like left, right, either way. I'm pumped, let's do it. Like he's like, yeah, eastbound, westbound. Where's my planet? Is it, eh, yeah, this one. He's like dapping himself up on the way out. Whatever happened in that house, probably great. He probably got to like third base and he's like, He's ready, man, I don't know, fake or not, I hope aliens move like this. But he's got sea legs. He's not used to our gravity, clearly. He has no idea what he's doing. A little stronger than the moon. Number four, MUFON. Just shot over Houston, Texas. Dude, is this thing a giant floating Christmas tree ornament or a halo ship? Cause like, <laughs> what, what, what am I looking at here, you know? Dude, stuff like this freaks me out. Cause like, as humans, we think we've seen everything and understand. And then you see like a new light up squid and you're like, Oh, that makes my brain feel weird. Like when I don't know what I'm looking at and things are just like weird colors and different shapes, I just panic, you know? 
I feel like I'm losing grips on reality. Also, this thing is a MUFON case, which stands for a Mutual Unidentified Flying Object Network. It's like 50 countries all working together, sending each other videos like this. It looks like some sort of glittery anomaly. See, I'm quick to say spaceship, but then again, I just saw a nope over the weekend and like, yeah, I don't really know anything anymore. This could be a creature or a body or a projection. It's 2022, I don't, I, I, I don't know, I don't, I, I don't know. Number three, Dave Foley. Canadian comedy icon, Dave Foley. Yeah, we're talking about him for a little bit. Let's do it. So when the Kids in the Hall star took to Twitter only a couple of months ago, he caught the attention of all of his followers, including I, Mr. Alien Guy on YouTube. Foley tweeted, quote, after years of interest in the UFOs without ever seeing anything, I saw something. Insane. I also imagine he tweeted this in his Bugs Life voice. That's really, that's just what I do for me personally. This is a drawing of what I saw. I was with a friend who I'll let decide if he wants to be attached to this and moved silently at great speed, hovered and pulsated with light, end quote. Now this ship does look a lot like what we've seen in past reports, so who knows? Maybe Dave actually saw a UFO, sorry, UAP. I have a big alien guy looking at me. He's like, it's UAP. I'm like, UAP, you got it. Sorry, man, that's old school. So who knows? Maybe he actually saw a real life entity. Maybe these aliens are fans of Bugs Life. Maybe they just loved Kids in the Hall. Maybe they wanted an autograph, I don't know. Number two, tea saucers. So apparently two of the editors from Titanic yeah, have publicly made a comment saying that this video right here, if it was fake, would be very, very hard to do. They did the Titanic, dude. At first I was like, yeah, this is so fake. It looks like the intergalactic Beastie Boys music video. I was like, what? It looks so fake. It looks like the 1902 trip to the moon movie, like the black and white video. You know, the one with the guy's face in the moon is just like splat. Like the rocket ship crashes into his face. Like cheesy, right? Cheesy. Like a saucer on a string over a model building type thing, cheesy. Uh, nope. Apparently this one has experts stumped. Taken in 1997 in Las Lomas, Mexico. Always Mexico, dude. They have the craziest sightings. Look, it looks fake, but when people who edit stuff every day in the movies are like, uh, yeah, we, we uh, don't know how to do that yet. That's when it gets really scary. Number one, 2021 flyby. It's odd because we obviously joke and have a good time on this channel, especially when talking about aliens, of course. It's a nice change than, you know, King Henry and, oh, you know, cutting heads off. It's nice, we like to take a break. But for our number one spot on today's list, look at me, look how serious this guy is right now, right? I'm cocking my head to the left, I'm squinting at nothing. That's how you know it's real. I could tell anybody bad news with this face right here, and I'm here to tell you today on Bumblebee that we are not alone. Aliens do exist. They came out with this vertical portrait mode video. That's how you know it's real when it's filmed like a world star video. And the video itself is quite short. And that's because it's taken in the cockpit of a plane that is currently flying at high speeds, at very high altitudes. But it appears to be passing a metallic sphere. Yeah, this is what happens when a UAP enters restricted airspace. The pilot attempted to communicate a warning to said object, but of course, it was to no avail. I just said it was to no avail. That's how you know I'm being serious. There you go. These things are whipping through the air well beyond the speed of sound, yet there's no atmospheric disturbance, no sonic boom, no turbulence, only questions. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have organic material. Just this morning, we received a huge announcement from NASA. Of course, many of us are at least in some way familiar with the Perseverance rover that is currently on Mars, digging around in the soil. And recently, this rover has been searching at the site of an ancient river delta, trying to find any clues that might give us insight into the past lives of the planet. Well, that sweet little rover has made its most important discovery to date. A few recent Recently collected samples have been confirmed to include organic matter. This means that the Jezero crater, which likely was once the home to a lake that the delta emptied into, well, it would have potentially had a habitable environment about three and a half billion years ago. These organic molecules are supremely important because they represent the building blocks of life, like carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And while this discovery doesn't just flat out confirm the past existence of life on the planet, it is one of the strongest clues we've ever received, which is absolutely unbelievable. In our number nine spot today, we have the mysterious beam. Before I dive into this one, guys, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you're enjoying this video so far. It does really help us out. Pretty recently, scientists explained that they captured a mysterious beam of energy that was coming from the star that is the closest known star to the sun, Proxima Centauri. This star is small and low mass and is located about 4.2 light years away from us. The thing about this star is 
that it has one rocky exoplanet that is 17% larger than Earth in its habitable zone, which would make liquid water a possibility on the planet. This planet's habitability has been disputed throughout the years, but this signal could be a sign that it may be even more habitable than any of us know. Scientists explained that the signal shifted while it was being observed, which mimicked the shift caused by the movement of a planet. They're taking extra precautions to figure out what exactly caused this shift in case it was some sort of a mundane source, but it will of course take some time to figure out, but it's all very exciting. In our number 8 spot today we have Europa. One of Jupiter's moons called Europa has a red tinge to it, and in 2001 NASA scientists revealed that it's possible that alien microbes might be responsible for this red color. The surface of this moon is mostly ice, but it has been shown that it reflects infrared radiation in a really bizarre way. This means that something is binding it together, but researchers haven't been able to come up with the correct combination of elements and compounds to make the data that they have make sense. There are some bacteria on Earth that can thrive in extreme conditions, and that also have that red and brown color which could potentially be responsible for the color on this moon. The surface temperature might be too cold for them to survive, but the warmer interior might be where they are located. Some geological activity on the moon could then push them closer to the surface, where they are then flash frozen in place. In our number 7 spot today we have cyanobacteria. For around two decades, Dr. Richard Hoover has been studying meteorites that were found in Antarctica and in 2011 he claimed that he and his team had found evidence of ancient bacteria from colonies that thrived on comets, moons, and other planets. The astrobiologist said they were able to make this discovery through the use of the most advanced micro scanning technology in the entire world. Dr. Hoover sliced open these meteorites and discovered what they call the remains of cyanobacteria, also known as blue green algae. This type of algae is said to have a unique quality and the ability to thrive even in some of the harshest conditions, which is necessary when talking about surviving the extreme environment that some other planets hold, as well as just space in general. Dr. Hoover said that while some of the bacteria he had found was similar to those on Earth, he also said that some of the others were completely alien. He said, quote, Neither I nor other experts who have seen the evidence have any idea what these creatures might be. I believe these findings indicate that life is not restricted to Earth, but is broadly distributed, even outside our solar system. In our number 6 spot today we have the radiation proof bacteria. In 2002, Russian astrobiologists hypothesized that a bacteria here on Earth may have actually evolved on Mars. Dianacus radioranus is the most tough bacteria here on Earth. It can withstand even the most extreme conditions such as cold, dehydration, vacuum, and acid. But the craziest part is that it is virtually radiation proof. These little microbes can withstand several thousand times the amount of radiation a human can withstand, as well as more radiation than any other bacteria on Earth. You can even find this bacteria on the inside of a nuclear reactor. That's how radiation proof it is. Scientists did an experiment to see how quickly this bacteria could build up a stronger radiation resistance by zapping it with enough radiation to kill 99.9% .9 of it, and then leaving the remaining 0.0% to repopulate before zapping it again and just repeating the process. It was concluded that it would have taken E. coli thousands and thousands of rounds to build up the same resistance that this hardy bacteria did in only 44 rounds. With this experiment and based on the dose of radiation they gave each bacteria, it would take millions and millions of years to get even close to the amount of radiation they gave this bacteria in one cycle. Since Earth just doesn't carry that amount of radiation, it has led some scientists to speculate that since Mars is virtually now unprotected and receives extremely high amounts of radiation, these bacteria may have evolved on Mars and gained their resistance in just a few hundred thousand years, and then they may have been flung off Mars by an asteroid and then brought to Earth on meteorites. In our number 5 spot today we have Enceladus. Enceladus used to be thought of as basically just an icy snowball floating around in space, or as a small moon of Saturn with a diameter of 502 kilometers. but as it turns out, this small moon might hold some 
some pretty amazing potential. It was discovered that this moon has hydrothermal processes going on underneath its crust. To us non-scientists, that means almost next to nothing, but what if I said that that means that it just might have all of the requirements for life, and that it is becoming a greater possibility that we might find microbial life there. Basically, this moon has an icy shell for a surface and then a rocky interior, but between these two layers is a warm ocean, and this ocean is where scientists think life is most likely to be. This discovery came almost accidentally when the Cassini orbiter arrived to Saturn in 2005, and it found water plumes shooting out of the cracks in the surface of this moon, which made scientists realize that it just may be geologically active. Through more research and by flying the orbiter through the water, by the time 2015 rolled around, scientists knew that it was holding all of the keys to life. While this little moon was never the original focus of research, it quickly took over with its incredibly exciting potential. In our number four spot today, we have light shifts. In the latter half of 2015, a Penn State astronomer named Jason Wright explained that there were pretty erratic and spontaneous shifts in light that was coming from a newly discovered star. The star sits about 1,280 light years away from us on Earth, and these shifts were very similar to as if something was passing in front of our view of the star briefly before passing through. Scientists weren't able to connect this to any exoplanets or anything like that, which we could understand, and this is what led Jason to quite an interesting theory. He stated that it is possible that the shifts are caused by massive objects passing in front of the star in a kind of orbit, like an array of massive satellites or a similar kind of structure, like the type of thing that would be produced by an intelligent and civilized life form. Again, like many things, it's just a theory, but a very compelling one at that. In our number three spot today, we have the UFO footage. Remember during the pandemic when there was that footage from the Navy that went viral where it captured some kind of UFO, but we didn't really have the time to freak out because we were all just like watching Tiger King and wondering what the hell was going on and when we could go outside again? Well, let's freak out about it now because what the heck was captured on those videos? The US Navy released footage a few years ago where they had captured video of some sort of wingless aircraft that was traveling at hypersonic speeds. Of course, people are wary to believe that this is a true sign of alien life and alien visitors, but the thing is, we simply just don't really know what it is. We know it's not something that is known to us yet, so this definitely could be a sign of some sort of alien life. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But hey, if the Navy's worried, so am I. In our number two spot today, we have the bacterial experiment. On Earth, most living creatures require oxygen to live, but the problem with a lot of planets is that there's far more hydrogen and helium. Last year, scientists decided to take two different bacteria. One was E. coli, which can be found in the guts of humans in ordinary yeast, which is used in things like bread and beer. With these two bacteria, they tried to see if they could live in different environments. When placed within flasks that contained either pure hydrogen or pure helium, they still managed to grow, just at a slower pace. This evidence goes to show that there might be living organisms that we haven't found yet because we are looking in the wrong places. In our number one spot today, we have the Venus cloud. Last year in September of 2020, astrobiologists everywhere were excited and skeptical of some new potential evidence that had been found in the upper clouds of Venus. Firstly, can we just take a second to really think about how cool of a job an astrobiologist has? Anyway, the new findings were pointing to the potential of the presence of phosphine in these clouds. Phosphine is rare and usually a poisonous gas that on Earth is basically always met with the presence of living organisms. Venus hasn't really been the top of the list of choices for finding potential life due to its surface temperature and pressure and the sulfuric acid clouds, but this evidence could prove to say something otherwise. Two separate telescopes were able to pick up the signatures of phosphine in a cloud that had a similar temperature and pressure to Earth, and while this isn't concrete evidence of space bugs, it will at least be a reminder that we should continue looking for life even in the most unlikely places. And hey, maybe it is space bugs. Coming in at number 10, we have the Tic Tac. Not the breath freshener candy, I'm talking about the shape of an alien mothership here. You know, The Tic Tac shape has been reported for decades by UFO witnesses and pilots all over the world, and this video was one of the three that the Pentagon eventually have declassified in the past few couple years. The Tic Tac incident begins around November 10th, 2004, when radar operators reported seeing odd and slow moving objects flying in groups of 5 to 10 off the coast of San Diego. Commander David 
Fravor and the Black Aces Squadron were asked by the USS Nimitz if they could aid in identifying what exactly was over their radar for the past couple weeks. The two F-18s chased this during an exercise. Yeah, imagine chasing a UFO. Like Top Gun 3, Reptilians. One of the pilots, Chad Underwood, got video and his displays caught some pretty crazy stuff. All the pilots who were involved said the object looked like a large white Tic Tac candy, unlike any other known aircraft. These objects have been sighted overcoming the Earth's gravity with no visible means of propulsion. They also lack any flight surfaces such as wings or lights. So what exactly is this flying candy? I don't know. And number 9, the Go Fast. This next video was the second out of the three videos that the Pentagon finally declassified. I say finally after they got leaked and then the Pentagon of course was like, oh yeah, those three videos, yeah, they're, uh, of course they're authentic. Like yeah, thanks for the heads up. The video shows a rounded object absolutely hauling ass across the water. The USS Theodore sent out some jets to see what the buzz was. The latest tech from the US can't even really get a read at first, but after some recalibrating, the fighter jet systems picks up and locks onto its target. The relief and confusion from the pilots makes this video great. They can't even believe what they're witnessing. After playing with different mods, the backseater is able to show the steady moving object in different lenses, infrared, thermal. It's the real deal. I would have just pretended to pass out as soon as we were close, you know what I mean? Just whoop, whoop, da. Number eight, gimbal. When Lou Elizondo ran the Defense Department initiative called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, or ATIP, he compiled a list of logic-defying capabilities most commonly associated with UAP sightings. The new term for UFOs, yeah. He calls those traits the five observables. Anti-gravity, sudden acceleration, hypersonic velocity, cloaking and low visibility, and transmedium travel. The third video leaked and finally declassified from the Pentagon is the gimbal video. We're taken aboard the same carrier ship, the USS Theodore Roosevelt, taken also in 2015. The video shows a flying object and was shot off the screen of an operator aboard the USS Roosevelt. It moves, turns, rotates. Yeah, how much movement it isn't making is actually the scary part. So stationary, no means of propulsion, no exhaust. This thing's weird, dude. The official Navy video was taken in 2015 and filmed aboard a Navy fighter jet from the nuclear aircraft carrier, the USS Theodore Roosevelt off the eastern coast near Florida. And this thing looks like a floating spinning top, just sitting there. I'm just gonna say it, that's what I think it looks like. You know what I mean? Number seven, swarm splash. We now have two videos taken from military personnel from apparently the same incident. Isn't that interesting? Makes it realer and realer, doesn't it? The radar footage released by Jeremy Corbell shows multiple objects popping up and around the Navy's USS Omaha from an incident in July 2019. The ship was about 125 miles off the coast of San Diego when the footage was recorded. Radar shows the USS Omaha absolutely being swarmed by 14 UFOs. In the same incident that a spherical aircraft was filmed disappearing into the Pacific Ocean. Okay, this is getting scary now. Same ship, two vids, same time. The radar shows the blips hovering around the ship, not really doing anything. Also, imagine 14 unidentified aircrafts above a US warship. It would be game over, like boom, 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 dude, out of the sky. But instead, we're just left with the videos, scratching our heads, in awe. Then the thing splashes into the water, showing transmedium travel. You can hear the operator say mark bearing and range, so they were clocking these things. This has unlocked a new fear of mine. Yeah, water. Jaws has nothing on me now. Number six, pyramids. The video and photos of this next encounter were originally shared at the Office of Naval Intelligence briefing on May 1st, 2020, and later leaked to Jeremy Corbell, filmmaker and UFOlogist. For those of you who don't know Jeremy, like he's like our guy. He's pushing the boundaries, he's putting pressure on officials, he's a filmmaker and an avid UFOer like me. And he's got his hands in some pretty, pretty deep pockets. I'm just as puzzled with this video as you are. Green pyramids? Pulsing? The leaked video of flashing triangle-shaped objects that flew over a US warship is the real deal, the Pentagon said, after UFO investigators released the video and other puzzling photos online. Shot through night vision from the ship itself, the Pentagon confirmed in a statement that the leaked photos and videos were captured by official US Navy. <sighs> Though it's declined to label them as UAPs. Ah. Quote, I can confirm that the referenced photos and videos were taken by Navy personnel, Pentagon spokesperson Susan Gao said in a statement. Okay, so they're real, but what are they? Is this what the Egyptians based theirs off of? I don't know, what do you think? Number five, Congress. May 17th of this year was the first United States official Congress hearing in the last 50 years. Monumental. 
from Blue Book to UAPs. They tried to make this hearing look as dated and as boring as they could, but there were two videos shown at the hearing. One, a USO, unidentified submerged object, shown only to officials at a closed room conference after the hearing. And this one, the 2.3 seconds of something shiny just whizzing by a ship. Apparently they said it was a deflated balloon. I'm surprised it's not swamp gas way up there. See, this is the government we know and love. Leaking and sharing. One terrible video out of 140 cases between 2004 and 2021. And this is it? This is barely anything. Lawmakers were shown declassified images and footage of UFOs. I'd love to see their faces before and after the briefing. You know, they just walk in, <laughs> walk out. Number four, Mexico. On March 5, 2004, a Mexican Air Force flight crew filmed 11 unidentified flying objects in the skies over southern state of Campeche. But the public was not notified of the sightings until Mexico's Defense Department issued a statement on May 12th, days later. Of course. I get it. You gotta come up with an excuse. We get it. A press release was accompanied by a videotape that showed some bright objects resembling orbs of light moving quickly on an evening cloudy sky. The lights were actually extreme heat sources filmed by the crew using infrared technology during a surveillance mission in search of drug smuggling planes. They were reportedly flying at an altitude of about 11,000 feet. The Mexican Air Force has released footage of what a UFO expert said were two, then 11 objects picked up as they whizzed around the clouds, sometimes disappearing totally. I just saw Jordan Peele's nope, and the clouds thing is really messing with me. Yeah, spoiler alert, sorry. Number three, Chile. Experts still can't explain this next video captured from a Navy helicopter. After two years of study, Chilean authorities have declassified and released a nine minute video of a UFO. On the afternoon of November 14th, 2014, a Chilean Navy pilot and a technician were flying a helicopter along the coast when they saw something fishy. They were going north in a twin engine Airbus Cougar when something appeared in the sky and matched their velocity of 130 knots. The helicopter's technician was testing the thermal imaging properties of the infrared FLIR high definition camera. After minutes, the pilot and technician observed the object make two distinct discharges of some type liquid or gas, which produced a red hot signature captured by the infrared imager. The Navy turned the video over to the committee for the study of anomalous aerial phenomenon known as CEFA. This is the Chilean government group that investigates UFO sightings. I guess the sixth observable is if you see a UFO fart, cause yeah, that's clearly a fart, you know? Number two, Spain. This next one, yeah, I, I don't know if it's real or not. I thought the Scorpion King with the rock was real. Yeah, the latest CGI, you know? So who knows? But I can't stop watching it. The video allegedly shows a UFO filmed by a fisherman near Galicia, Spain. The craft hovers over the ocean before splashing into the waters as military jets fly overhead. We see two fighter jets whiz by this fishing ship, apparently following this craft. There isn't any official info surrounding this video, I just felt like it's pretty modern and shows some F-18s and the speeds that they fly at, you know? The fishermen film a 42 second video showing what I guess would be the Spanish military chasing a UFO accompanied by an unmarked blacked out chopper before slamming down into the water. If we use Elizondo's five observables and apply them to this video, we see low visibility, hypersonic speeds, and transmedium travel. The more I watch, it's gotta be fake, but after listening to all the fighter pilots talk about chasing these things literally into the water, it's got me thinking. I don't know, what do you think? And number one, the Aguadilla Airport. This is probably my favorite UFO video. The longest, clearest, and most puzzling. The incident took place in 2013 in Aguadilla, Puerto Rico. Scientists who've analyzed thermal images of a flying object recorded in Puerto Rico are still trying to figure out what could have done this. A team of analysts working with the SCU, which is the Scientific Coalition for UAP Studies, a private group of scientists, military analysts, and investigators, produced a report analyzing this incident. It's a comprehensive stew of thermal, visual, and sensor data related to an unusual series of events in and around the Aguadilla, Puerto Rican airport. Yeah, they were experiencing a couple weeks of these things. This thing's just trucking steadily, splits into two, turns directions. Safe to say this video does a great job of showing Lou's five observables. What do you think? Are these crafts being piloted by the way or are they being remote controlled? Either or, that's absolutely terrifying.